Good morning, traders. I'm Dennis Dick. And I'm Joel L. Conan. Welcome to Pre-Market Info. Well, on today's show, we're going to talk about Walmart. They beat, but the street's not that happy because the stock's down two bucks. New York Post is reporting that Coinstar might be interested in a private sale. They're actually also reporting that Electronic Arts might be interested in a private sale. We'll discuss the earnings reports from Cisco, NetTap, Agilent, Dollar Tree, and Applied Materials. And the Facebook lockup ends today, so 271 million shares become available for sale today. Looking at the overall market here, though, Joel, what what's your take? You've been away for a few days here. We really haven't done a heck of a lot since you've yeah, been gone. Yeah, I'm very disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't move the market around? <laughs> yeah, I, I've been gone for five days. The day I, I, I leave, we close at 14.0050. Now I come back, we close three points away from that. <laughs> You didn't manage to take out the 52-week high at 14.13 and a quarter, and you put you couldn't get to saying to trade under 13.90. What what were you doing? Were you, what are you working on some algorithms or something? I guess I was just sitting on my hands because I guess I'm not the major market mover because I could not get this market. This market did not budge at all since you've been gone. This has been the most boring week. I mean, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> how was Maine, by the way? Maine was very good. It's beautiful. I, I recommend people to go to Bahaba and Portland, Maine. There's a lot of beautiful territory. But uh, coming back and doing the numbers was such a disappointment. I mean, what the heck, Dennis? You Next time I go away, I want you to do a better job with the market. <laughs> you want me to move this market to give you some action because, well, at least you cho chose a good three or four days to take off there because you didn't miss any trading action, Joel. It has been quiet. Let's look here, though, at the overall market. Your big mover today, the market itself is up two points, but Walmart, Walmart is actually trading down over two bucks. The numbers themselves weren't that bad. They beat by a penny, a dollar eighteen against estimates of a dollar seventeen, but the revenue was a bit light. We've got 114.3 billion against the estimates are up at 115.5 billion. So the revenue was a bit light, and I think that's why Walmart is trading down here in the pre-market on big volume too. Yeah, well, looking at the pre-market, this thing hit 71.90 and made several attempts to take it out. Um, it held, so 71.90 is your bogey on the downside. Uh, since it's had that low, it's got a little pop up to 72.75. So those will be two major areas to keep an eye on, 71.90 for support, 72.75 for resistance. Uh, if you go to the dailies here, uh, you did have some lows at 71.87 on July 25th. So that's what the big boys are shooting for. Uh, below that, 71.45 and 71.26. But 71.90 is a big level. Keep in mind, folks, this stock has had a heck of a run since its scandal. Uh, too bad they didn't have uh, bribe people in more countries. They'd be at like 100. <laughs> They'd be like at 140, but uh, thick trading stock here, down a couple bucks, uh, 72, 71, 190, good area support. I tend to think buyers might come into this one. We've seen this a few times through this earnings season where some of these big caps uh, report and they get beat up a little bit in the opening, but then as the market opens, the institutions come on and say, oh, look, Walmart's on sale here. I'm going to come scoop some up, and they start coming with their buying shoes on. So when Walmart falls to two and a half bucks, I think you got a lot of people looking, oh, this could be a good opportunity for me to get in this one. I haven't been in this one. I've missed this big move. I'm not going to miss the next big move, and I'm going to come in here and take advantage of these cheaper prices. Uh, moving on, though, Cisco reported earnings here as well. and We've got Cisco trading up significantly. Actually, I was talking about it yesterday. We highlighted, I actually tweeted out last night, too, this whole gap area from the 1778 to 1848 area from the last earnings report. It has filled that. We knew if it got above 18, it could get up into the mid-18s, 1850 area very quickly because there wasn't a lot of reference points in that gap area. That entire gap area filled, Joel. The gap trade worked there. Unbelievable. I mean, look at the run this thing has had Running. since it traded 1496. I mean, when did, uh, you know, routers become gold? I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, Goldman hopped on this move uh, last uh, last week, I believe, upgraded the stock. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're now filling the gap. I see major resistance at 1889. That was high back on uh, back on May 9th. Uh, pre-market activity, you're still uh, 1866. You're basically trading right up near the high. So maybe take it up uh, to the $19 level. I uh, see some uh, see some sellers at that level. Coming back on the downside, uh, 1820 has been able to hold uh, any kind of sell-off so far. So use that 1820 if you're buying this thing early or buying on the open or trying to protect some profits. Uh, keep a real close eye on 1820. Yeah, you almost got like a double top back there from that day or two days before that gap. You had 1890 was the high the day before that 1889 high. So that could be a, a decent resistance level, just noticing that on the charts as you pointed it out. So we're about... Tw- 25 cents away from there so if it continues to rally maybe you find some people to try to hold that double top in place uh lots of other earnings here this morning too we got dollar tree just reported dltr that stock is trading down significantly they beat 51 cents against uh, estimates of 47 but they lowered guidance a bit they lowered it to 47 to 51 from 852 so the guidance is what's knocking this stock down uh dollar tree losing three bucks here yeah, I just don't understand these. Uh, do- I haven't spent a penny in any of these uh, dollar stores. So I, uh, but obviously uh, there's quite a few of them that do quite well. Uh, we have uh, skydived off that news, just holding at forty six ninety nine, forty six ninety low. Really no bounce yet here in Dollar Tree. So buyer beware. Uh, going out to the charts here, you just have this isolated low at forty six thirty five. Back on May 18th, and that also coincided with a low at 46.52 back in April. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be touching that stock until it got in that area. But once again, no sign of a bounce in the pre-market as of yet. Agilent reported here last night, Joel, and this stock is absolutely getting killed here. Uh, they actually missed on they missed 79 cents against estimates of 83. And they lowered guidance, so not a good combination here for <laughs> Agilent. It's trading down over three bucks in the pre-market. Uh, if you look here, 37.50 is where it's trading at after closing at 40.48. You got that one isolated low there, 37.05. But if you start to cut through there, uh, you got the low back from July 24th at 35.32. I would hope it doesn't get that low today. Uh, looking at the pre-market, you snuck under the $37 level, actually got as low as thirty six seventy one, yeah. And now you got a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, and that bounce has taken us up under the $38 level, the thirty-seven eighty. dollars uh, Pulling back, uh, it looks like uh, you're going to start finding some good support there. It's at starting at 37 all the way down to the low at 36.71. Uh, if, in fact, it cuts through that area, uh, you have a low at 36.40 back on July 26th. NetApp is trading up NTAP, your symbol on that one, trading at 33 and a quarter right now. Reported earnings, 42 cents against estimates of 38. They actually raised guidance a bet up to 46 to 50 from 46. So uh, they're liking that on the street. This one was wild last night. It traded way up off the earnings. Then it sold all the way back off and traded flat. And then it started to bounce again. So we're bouncing right off the whole area from last night. 33 and a quarter is where it's trading. If you look here, you got that one isolated high jumping out at me, 34.19. What's your take? Yeah, this this thing has been all over the map. And now after making a, um, a low at uh, 30.02, in a really uh, crazy bounce here at 34.49. Uh, this is one of the formations that you're getting in the pre-market with a lot of consolidation now, right around this 33 area to 33 and a quarter. Uh, NepTap is trying to find a home. Uh, if you're playing this long off the open, a break below 33 would be a uh, reason to uh, perhaps look for an exit in this issue. Applied materials. Here's a dog for you. May, really made a really made a top here. Had been coming back in the last month, but they did disappoint. 
Uh, they made 24 cents against 22, but they lowered guidance, and that's why the stock is trading down here in the pre-market. 11.38 after closing at 11.80. But look at the multiple tops. This thing really made tops. If you look back in April, 12 <laughs> was all toppy, and then four or five days in a row here in August, we've topped out just under 12 bucks. Looks like the insiders knew something to get rid of this thing at 12 because the stock's selling off today. Yeah, it doesn't look like people are applying the materials that they make uh, as this stock has been on a steady decline and then it got the bounce back up to the $12 level. Uh, the bad news spike took it to uh, 11.05. That seems to be holding up in the pre-market. That coincides with the low at $11 on August 3rd. So 11, 11.05 looks like pretty good support. Now it's bumping its head up here against the 1140 level. Uh, it might try and sneak into yesterday's range. If, in fact, it does, you had a triple bottom from the 1168 to 1176 level. So I think those $12 sellers uh, will be stepping down to 1170. New York Post pumping two stocks that could be looking at a private equity sale. They're saying Coinstar is one, CSTR, and also Electronic Arts. So New York Post coming out with two stocks that could be uh, looking for a potential sale here. I don't know if they're <laughs> or if they're pumping it up for whatever reason, but that's interesting that the New York Post is all over just these two. So EA is trading up. 1458 right now after closing at 1309 and Coinstar is trading up significantly to 5175 after closing at 4822 so what's your take on this New York Post uh, news on these two stocks I think my take is is that I won't look at the technicals at this at all and uh you know put let's see what happens with these stocks today and over the next few days and if they don't continue going north, then the New York Post uh, should stop pop, you know, publishing news on stocks. I mean, I think it's hilarious that uh, you know I I can't ever remember you you saying this or us discussing it. I'm sure they've they've talked about uh, other issues before, but uh, just looking at the pre-market activity in Coinstar, which has been just on a slope nosedive since trading over 70 bucks in July. Hit a pre-market high at 55.15 and has been on a steady decline after that. So uh, if you had your order out there to sell in the pre-market, good luck. Uh, nothing back open in this stock. Uh, no support until 48. And then Electronic Arts, uh, the uh, I just think they're going out of business anyways. Oh. But uh, <laughs> where um, disclaimer, where, throw that disclaimer. Throw the disclaimer back uh, up there. How high did Electronic Arts get? 1588. It got to then, 1588 uh, today. Uh, it got to 1588. Come on. Yep, yep. If you were up early, you could have sold it at 1588. Uh, I got 1520. That maybe an odd. Still though, even over 15 bucks. I don't know why mine's saying 1520, but that's still ridiculous. I cannot believe that they can buy these things up just on a New York Post article. They're gonna buy these things up 15 percent. I mean, there may be some truth to this, but that's a lot to gamble, saying that these things, you know, you're going to buy the thing up 15 or 20% on just an article in the New York Post. Seems insane. Yeah, and uh, since it hit that level, it's been a, in a steady decline here. 1450s level it needs to hold here in the pre-market uh, to give any credence to this New York Post report. Well, talking about stocks getting taken over or going private, you got Best Buy getting a lift here again. Uh, the news was just that uh, Schultz had sent a letter to the board confirming his commitment to buy the company. So that just broke here a little while ago, and the stock spiked up to 20 bucks, pulled back a bit to 1980. Now, I mean, all of these spikes on the chart when you look at the daily are all these rumored uh, Schultz <laughs> basically coming in to buy the stock and take it private. Obviously, he said 24 to 26 is his price. The street obviously is still concerned, or the stock would be trading a lot higher than this. Uh, but, you know, they're getting this letter now, so it's getting a little bit of a lift here from that letter. Yeah, and uh, the article that I wrote for Seeking Alpha and also that we published on our post, boy, I did not make many friends off that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was called uh, just un-American. Uh, there's a few other things that I can't really say on the uh, on the airwaves here. Just to give uh, background. Folks, don't take me too personally. I was just looking at it from a, you know, from a macro standpoint. Uh, obviously, there's still a lot of skepticism uh, regarding uh, this offer. 
Uh, I'd look at this $20 level. Uh, after the news broke, you had three consecutive highs from 1998 to 2005. Uh, I think the real sellers may step in in that area in the pre-market uh, or during the regular session. If it pops up, uh, just keep an eye on the high. It actually hit $20 on the nose in the pre-market. So keep an eye on that level. Coming back on the downside. Uh, as long as it holds 1970s, probably still good to go north. Yeah, just to give you a background on that article, if you didn't read it, Joel just made some Best Buy comparisons to Circuit City, and I think everybody <laughs> got real upset because obviously Circuit City, we know what happened with them. I I'm, I kind of understand your argument. I'm not totally on board with it. I think Best Buy is going to survive, and I think you you know you were just saying you know it's the possibility there with these big box electronic stores when you've got competition from Amazon and other ones that don't have these huge stores to operate and a lot of times people go into Best Buy and they look at the product and they they try it out but then they come back online and they find it cheaper online and buy it online so you're basically saying Best Buy was just basically a place where people go to try stuff out almost a showroom for some of these online uh, retailers it was an aggressive article I'll give you that Joel <laughs> Uh, Facebook, speaking of uh, stocks that are in, or, uh, it's coming out of the lockout here today. 271 million shares are going to be freed for a uh, sale that can be sold by uh, traders who were obviously in the stock ahead of time uh, today. So a lot of traders have cited this day saying, oh, you know, now there's more sales coming on and the stock's really going to start to get beat up because there's so much more uh, shares out there for available for sale. Uh, but sometimes you see these real, you know, people have sold ahead of this. This isn't a date that just came out. People knew this date. Although the stock is trading down today on it, twenty dollars and sixty-five cents. Can that nineteen eighty-one low hold? I've been saying it. I'm still holding on to my position, or nineteen eighty-two, I guess it is. Can it hold though? Uh well, don't when the lockup period ends, don't people send a market order on the open to, to dump the stock? Is that <laughs> is that what happens? It's kind of like on a buy. It's the opposite of a buyback. On a buyback, when a company announces, they send market orders to the floor. Uh, Dennis, you do have a chance here. Uh, I do see maybe a rounding bottom here in this stock. I see it did get stuck under that psychological twenty dollar level. We've been I've been saying that every level since uh, thirty eight. <laughs> but uh, you know, nineteen eighty two uh, was the low. It backed it out with a nineteen ninety low. Has not been able to sneak under twenty dollars. Uh, this would be an opportunity to take a look here. At least you have a reference point um, on the downside. Uh, nineteen eighty two. You have to seriously uh, think about getting out of the stock if you traded below that level a lot of real estate on the upside i mean there's no doubt about it the area i'd be looking at on the upside though is i don't see any major resistance to 2245 uh but doesn't look like we're going to get there today the overall market here is just kind of hanging out we're up two and a half points 140625 can we get up to that 14, 13 area? We're going to start to pull back again. What's your take? Uh, just I'm going to keep an eye on the uh, on the low here, 1403. Uh, that was just 50 cent below the close. Uh, that has been the highest close that we've had of this move uh, since April. Uh, the last uh, six settlements have been above the $1,400 level. You just got to, as long as we maintain this 1400 you got to figure we're poised to go up and test 14 13 and a quarter through earnings seasons. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to cause this market to go down. Well, I think you just keep playing the range until until it doesn't work anymore. And when, this, when the market's been getting down to the mid-1390s, it's finding buyers. And around in the upper 14s, it has been selling, finding sellers. I tend to think we might eventually get to that 52-week high up there at the 14, 13, 25. But until that, I guess you just keep playing the range. Okay, show, okay folks, that's our show for today, and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow.